Come on in the room. Come on, come on, come on. Y'all know what we about to get into. Go ahead. Wash your hands. Go ahead, wash your hands, y'all. All right. Hold on, let me move the camera. I don't want to touch it with my actual hand. Let me use this napkin. All right. Let's get into today's meal. I know that's what you've been waiting on. Listen, today I'm gonna teach you a part of our uh, classic crock pot meals, how to get the smoky grilled experience of a barbecue pit and or a smoker out of your crock pot. All right, yes I am using gloves today. I am using gloves today. So let's go ahead, y'all. This is very simple, very easy. Um, what you see here is that I have already uh, seasoned. This is a whole rack, but I cut the rack in half so it can fit in my crock pot. You can do the same with yours. And so I've already cut mine in half. I did partially remove the membrane, not the whole thing, because I kind of do want it to stick together, and then I'll cut it individually. Praise the Lord, prophetess. So as you're gonna see me here is that I have this uh, bacon sheet and I put it with foil and I'll flip it over to the backhand side. I'm gonna take this mustard. Follow me quickly. You're gonna take this mustard on both sides and y'all, I'm just gonna rub it in. I actually skipped a step, but that's all right. That what happened, I got to think about that Holy Ghost and that touch from Jesus and it messed up my own self. All right, we're gonna do that. Then you're gonna flip it over. And you do want a generous amount. I'm not looking for it to be completely wet though, but I do want to use this mustard as a coating. Mustard, although it does give it a tangy flavor, is a natural tenderizer, okay? Now these are uh, baby back ribs. You could have bought short ribs. Um, you could have, uh, um, I forgot that other one is called. But there are normally three different types of ribs sold in, uh, in your stores. Uh, you may have different, different types if you go to an uh, actual butcher. So that's what we've done in here. Now pay attention because I did, I wanted to do this before I did the mustard, but that's all right. So here it is, this is going to be our rub. Let me show you how to get there, how to get to that point. Y'all, this ring light is acting up. My cash app is dollar sign Bose by Bailey. B O W S B Y B A I L E Y. First thing we're gonna add is this brown sugar in here, okay? Dump that brown sugar in there. Then I'm gonna proceed with, I know y'all see the glove, I'm not using the glove for y'all come for me. Some uh, garlic powder. Some onion powder. I actually got no measurements just yet. I just go until it feels right. Um, I want to add paprika. Many of you are saying, well, I see you got Tony's right there. Tony's is going to be the last thing that I add because I, although I do want it to be seasoned and have that savory taste, I'm not looking to cook salty ribs. That, if the ribs are salty, it takes away from the fact that it was supposed to be smoked. Okay, in an actual smoker and or barbecue pit. Some cayenne pepper, cause I am looking for that um that spice. <clears throat> uh oh, forgot to put the cat back on. Then I'm going to follow up with the um the uh, cayenne pepper. Sorry, y'all, that one wasn't open. I grabbed the wrong one. I mean, not cayenne pepper, the seasoned salt. All right. So, hold up y'all, you see here, if you know anything about brown sugar, it can be very clumpy. So what I'm gonna take is a, um, a mashed potato smasher, and I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna smash it down at first. I'm gonna smash and turn, smash and turn. And y'all give me just a second, smash and turn. I do have more gloves, but I don't wanna leave y'all to go get it, cause then y'all gonna say I'm taking too long, okay? So once you do that, you're gonna go ahead and just stir it all around. 
Lord have mercy. Hold on, y'all. I gotta wait to beat the system. Okay. I done grabbed a napkin. Y'all see that, huh? So y'all come and talk about me. So that way I'm not mixing juices and things. All right, just go ahead and go in there. Um, I would, I would have recommended that you use a whisk, but until it gets to dissolving a little bit more and it's not as clumpy, I wouldn't recommend using the whisk right now. So just go ahead and you're trying to get that to be to a finer texture. So that way the rub, that's what you're using this as a rub, can go on very uh, smoothly. Now, if you're anything like me, um, you have to be very sensitive when it comes to seasoning, especially your allergies and stuff. So I'm kind of, I am talking to y'all because I'm trying to give instruction, but at the same time, I'm holding my breath, okay? All right. <clears throat> so now that we've done that, you see how, you see where we're at now? Now that we've done that, we've gotten that consistency. What we're gonna go ahead and do is, you can just pour this, directly on top. And that is why I have this in a, a baking pan with foil because I don't want to create a big old mess, y'all. I want to use a generous amount, but I do not want to create a big old mess. You can see that? All right. Go ahead and just rub that in there. Don't y'all be scared. Go ahead and massage all of that in there. And I promise you everything will be all right. Hey, hon. How y'all doing today? Thank y'all so much for joining me. Go ahead. Get all that in there. And listen, I tell y'all all the time, don't, don't allow folk to make y'all feel bad that you're doing something different from the norm, okay? Let me tell you something. My daddy didn't teach me how to uh, go out there and, and grill and stuff like that. And I ain't mad about it. It's so many other lessons that I've learned from this, or from my, excuse me, from my father, that it didn't have to be grilling, okay? And there's just some stuff you had to learn how to find out on your own. So don't let these folks make you feel bad because you learn how to get the same end result and just use a different method. And that applies to whatever it is in your life. Folk out here wanna make you feel bad because you ain't doing it like them. Well, guess what? I wasn't created in your image. I was created in the image of Christ to follow the methods and the plans that the Holy Ghost reveals unto me. But I didn't come to preach on today. We're cooking ribs. All right, so y'all go ahead and make sure that y'all get um, all on the sides and stuff. Hey, cuz, I'm not selling plates today, cuz. I'm just, I'm just trying to finish my weekly thing out. Not send a place today. I'm sorry. But y'all, I really can, I really can uh, barbecue on the pit. But like I said, my daddy didn't teach me that, and I ain't mad about it. But I found out a way to do it inside the house, because guess what? Everybody can't afford a, uh, everybody can't afford a, um, a pit. Pits ain't cheap. Or a smoker, whatever the case may be. All right, y'all, so go ahead and get all that in there. I mean, thoroughly massage it all in there. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So, what I would normally do, now that you got this driver up on here, what I would have normally, and make sure that you flip the meat over and get in all them creases and things. What I would normally do is allow Watch out, hold on y'all. Is allow my meat to sit for about 10 to 15 minutes or so, so that it can get that kind of glaziness to it, that marinade type thing going on. That's what I would normally do. But for video purposes, I'm gonna just go ahead and show y'all what's going on. So it's just that simple. So what you're gonna do is, what you'll see is the back of the rib where the membrane was located, okay? Cause we're gonna put this in the crock pot. The back of the membrane is gonna be facing the inside of the pot. You'll see here that your ribs have a part where it's, you can see more bone than anything. So one side is more media than the other side. So this side is my more media side. So what I'm gonna do is place the media side down in the pot with the membrane side, the back of the baby back rib facing the inside. Just like that. Just like that, y'all. 
okay? Go ahead and put that in there. Same thing with this one. I'm gonna address, ooh, we y'all, ooh, ooh, mighty dark. Okay, this part, this part is uh, the more media side. So I'm gonna take this membrane, the back side of it, put it inside this way, facing the inside of the pot, all right? I'm gonna have to put it down a little bit more, and it's okay if they touch and overlap a little bit, it's all right, okay? So that's good, I'm gonna go ahead and take this glove off, now we're done with that part. Move all this out the way. And I'm coming, y'all. I know y'all like to see everything. You didn't show us. You didn't show us. Give me a second. Just like that. You see how it's in the pot? Just like that. All right? My, now, mine is on high, and this is going to cook for about uh, five to six hours if you do it on low about six to seven, seven and a half hours, all right? Maybe eight. What you're gonna see me do now is take some seasoning blend. Let me push this forward so you can see. Some seasoning blend, and in that little middle part where there's nothing in the inside, you're gonna tell me just drop, drop some seasoning blend in there. You can do fresh ones if you want, uh, fresh seasoning if you wanted to. I just didn't, you know, wanna have to go through all of that today, okay? You're gonna follow up with some of the W sauce. Y'all know I can't pronounce that. What, whatever it's called. And I'm not necessarily putting it directly on the meat. I'm just putting it to the bottom of the pot. I mean, the bottom of the crock pot. And I'm not putting much. Now, a lot of times when people are cooking ribs in the crock pot, they add so much liquid. We're not trying to make rib soup. We're trying to give it that smoky grilled experience that you would have as if it were on the actual grill. Then I'm gonna add a few drops of that liquid smoke, okay, y'all? Not much, just a little bit. You see here, I got some uh, pineapple chunks, but I really just need the pineapple juice. I may come back later on and show y'all what to do, because we're not gonna use all this pineapple juice. Show y'all what to do with the excess pineapple juice, as well as the pineapple chunks, how y'all can make a barbecue sauce, as well as how you can make a barbecue, you know, an outside drink. Uh-oh, I'm sorry, y'all, talking to y'all. Just want a little bit, and I'm using this sifter because I don't want any of the pineapple uh, chunks or tidbits to fall in there. Okay. And then I'm gonna put this to the side. Uh-oh, don't make a mess up, honey. So I did that, now this part is very optional. This part is very, very, very optional because you've already gone ahead and you've added cayenne pepper to your rub. But I'm just gonna go ahead and add um, half a teaspoon of jalapeno juice right there in the middle. Y'all, it's not very liquidy. Half a teaspoon of that. Then, I'm gonna put my top on my ribs and let them go. That's all you gotta do, let them go. Now y'all know the rule to a crock pot, as I've told you before. We do not take the lid off of this crock pot for the first hour and a half. Let that food cook, go find you something to do, go read your Bible, do homework with the kids, do some laundry, wash some dishes, sweep, mop, whatever you got to do, go ahead and do that. I, like I said, I'm putting mine on high. All right, y'all, very simple. Oh, when it's, when it's done, I'm gonna take uh, another baking pan with some foil, how you doing, praise the Lord. With some foil, I'm gonna place it, place the ribs on the cooling rack, okay? Make sure I don't have any of the extra juice. Put it, then I'm gonna put it on the pan with the foil and I'm gonna, I'm doing a homemade barbecue sauce today. I'm gonna glaze it with that barbecue sauce, put it in the oven on the broiler, excuse me, for about five to 10 minutes, okay, y'all? And that is gonna seal the deal for it all. It's gonna look like it came straight off the pit. All right, listen, know that I love you, huh? But Jesus loves you more, that you were designed by God and engineered to last. Y'all have a good day.